Rod Menzel with Great Way Roofing on top of the roof of GW Surfaces here in Ventura, California. And the first thing I want to do is give a quick overview of the roof. It, the building was built in 1985 from what I understand. It looks like the original roof surface. You can see there's been some repairs in the past which is to be expected for a roof that's this old. And it's got good slope to the roof though. Um, we're, I'm at a high point right here and uh, another high point. So the water sloping to that corner to that corner and this corner. There's parapet walls, so you get a lot of water traveling down to these corners here, and the water's gonna run right from here down to the drains. These are our primary areas of concern is you wanna make sure that the walls are, are in good shape. And since a lot of water ends up here, not a lot of water is gonna be here, but the water's gonna end up here at the drain. Uh, there's debris in the drains, so there are palm trees out front, it looks like a lot of the debris ends up here, so we want to make sure that that's cleaned out on a regular basis after the roof's installed. But once again, you can see the waterways. Copy metal was installed on top of the roof, which is a good idea. It's a concrete tilt-up building, so uh, not necessary, but uh, once again, never hurts. Skylights on the roof, the skylights are in good shape. Uh, the base of the skylights is where the leaks are probably going to be coming from, if so. And mechanical equipment. There's Looks like one, two, three, four HVAC units. And in an ideal situation, the units would be lifted, um, disconnected here at the ducting, properly roofed underneath, and then reconnected. That's an ideal situation. If not, you could still roof underneath there. Here's another unit and also a windscreen or an equipment screen. It's, it's obviously aged to the point where it probably could be replaced. The nice thing about this one, though, is the metal pipes that penetrate the roof deck. Those can be sealed up nice. When it's wood, that can become a real problem, but we got metal pipes that's doing this. So this could be rebuilt and look nice and uh, wouldn't be a costly item to do, and it would be definitely recommended. Another thing that we want to check for is on the parapet walls. Take, for example, this wall. It looks like a repair has been done here in the past, and you want a good product that's going to stick. Here's my hand going through this product right here. This is definitely a leak source. Um, not for sure, but it could be a possible leak right here. But so when the new product goes on, you want to make sure that all of these issues are addressed. The other issues you want to address are any soft spots out in the roof. We notice especially at repair areas is where there might be more soft spots. So we're going to want to cut this part of the cap sheet out and put down a new cap sheet before we uh, reinstall a new roof system. Once again, there is some good slope to the roof, but there are a couple areas that are ponding. Um, right here you have a natural little pond because you've got a ridge right here. So you've got a little water ponding right here. And in these areas, what we want to do is we want to reinforce these areas with a polyester fabric and additional coating in it. I'm also noticing a little bit of weak spot right here. So any of these areas, once again, we want to cut out and make sure it's in good shape. Now to the recommendation. Um, a couple different options for this roof would be ideal. I've, I believe a fluid applied acrylic roof system would be the, make the most sense. You can go with a one ply or a two ply system and the cost difference would be the extra emulsion and polyester for a two-ply system and on a one-ply system it's just emulsion and polyester with the acrylic coat and the top coat that goes over it. If you do go with a one-ply system there already naturally is a second ply in the waterway but a, a, an option lately has been to put an additional ply of polyester fabric so you'd end up with a third ply in the waterways and we'd actually set that into an acrylic coating it makes it really strong tough and flexible and once again this is where all the water is going to come to so it makes sense to really reinforce the the perimeter of this building now any of the pipe penetrations the terminations there's an additional product that goes on there it's a it's an elastomeric caulking by western colloid that we want to put in there and that's a great product and we want to also put that at the drains it's even stronger and tougher and more flexible than the acrylic coating and the emulsion, which is already strong, tough, and flexible. But that system right there, just adding that detail at the skylights, at the penetrations, that's really going to make this roof, uh, you could say, almost bulletproof. If you'd like to do something about this equipment screen, what might be recommended would be just to go ahead and come back with the T111 siding, replace all this wood, put new wood up here, leave the pipes because they're still in good shape. And then when you put like a two by six over the top of this and put a piece of coping metal over it. And right here what's supporting it, you could also just at least put a coating over it, like just like paint, you know, exposed wood's not gonna do as well in the weather. But if you put a coat of paint over it, it'll really definitely help it out. So that's just another option to think about. If we end up messing with this equipment screen, the satellite's gonna be, it's gonna go down. So I don't know if that's working right now or not.